It's Kia, this is A Little Bit Richer, and today I'm taking a deep dive into the world of student loans. Student loans are one of those things that it's so easy to just take a passive approach to. You go to uni, you get the loan, your repayments start, and you more or less forget about it. But this podcast is all about taking back control of all of your finances, and the first step to getting that control is to understand it. With me today to help us get to grips with all this is Abigail Foster. Abigail is a chartered accountant and she's the founder of Ellent, a financial education hub for students, employees and parents. As part of this, she runs workshops all about student loans. So I knew I had to get her on to learn more. Abigail, people listening to this could have all sorts of different student loan repayment plans. It's changed a lot. So let's begin. Could you talk me through all the different plans? Okay, yes, there's been many different plans. We'll talk about the undergrad modern plan. So one, two, and five. So one was if you went to university pre-2012. Um, I think it was post-1998, but pre-2012, you would have been paying like the tuition loan at about 3K, very, very nice amount of money. I wish I'd paid that. <laughs> then you had plan two, which came in from 2012. So any students that went to university from 2012 to 2023, you were on plan two. And then any university student that goes to university from this year, so from 2023 onwards, they are now on plan five. Wow. Okay. So how do all of these loans work? I mean, if you think about a loan, we think about interest rates, right? So you, you know, you might take out a credit card at a certain amount of interest rate and you know what you're going to pay. Is that the same when it comes to student loans? The interest rates on all three plans, frustratingly, all different. I um, like to make it nice and complicated. So <laughs> plan one is either RPI, which stands for Retail Price Index, better known as inflation, or the Bank of England base rate plus 1%. So often what's happened with plan one is the interest rate has been lower because it's that Bank of England base rate plus 1%. Then for plan two, they had the interest rate set at RPI plus So retail price index, also known as inflation, plus 3%. So when inflation got crazy high last year and we saw those like 11.9% numbers of inflation, we saw huge interest on the student loans. Plan five, they decided as their like nicety for changing the plan was they basically introduced interest and cut it back to just RPI. So just inflation. So there is a common misconception that the loan doesn't increase over time. But that's not really true because it does. It does increase by uh, RPI, but they then assume that that RPI means it's just increased with inflation. Therefore, the real value of the loan hasn't increased, but it it definitely does increase over time. Okay, that's good to know that. So we need to have a look and see, depending on what plan you're on, that depends on what interest rate you're obviously going to have on your student loan. So when it comes to repaying then, because I know when I was in university, not too long ago, I know I, I've still got my baby face, not too long ago, but when I was in university, it was always this thing where I had friends say, you know, I've taken out X amount, now I'm going to have to pay it straight away. I've graduated and it's almost like the next day after graduation, you're going to have to pay it back. But I want to ask you, what salary do you normally have to be on before you start paying off your student loan? Okay, with the student loan, again, let's go through one, two and five. So with plan one, you have to be earning over £22,015, if we're getting specific. With plan two, it's 27295 And then with the new plan five, you need to earn more than twenty five grand a year. So this is your yearly salary. So let's say you're on 25k, then you wouldn't pay anything back on this new plan yet until you earn over 25k. So you only pay back 9% over those thresholds. Something to be careful, though, is that... What tends to happen is they'll take your yearly salary, divide it by 12, and then look at your monthly pay slip. So if you don't always earn the same every month, you might be overpaying student loan. And that's something to look out for because it's worked out on a yearly basis, but on your pay slip can often be then like brought back to that monthly amount. So yeah. That makes sense. I think it's good to know that. I've seen people online have decided to take control of their student loans and log in and see if they're overpaying. Yes. and be able to actually make those claims back. But I, I just want to kind of go back to what you said. So when you earn over a certain threshold, you mentioned there's any income over that. I think people sometimes get confused. You know, if it's, like I said, the, the new plan, it's when you earn over £25,000. Some people think that they're going to pay 
back 9% of everything, but it's only the income over, right? It is only the income over the threshold across all the plans. So if you are earning 30K, you are paying 9% on that plan five, you're paying 9% on 5K. So the difference between your 30,000 salary and that 25K threshold, 9% on that. But it does add up. Obviously, the more you start earning, that 9% is, is quite a large chunk, which is why we commonly call it a university tax mm -hmm. as opposed to a loan, because you pay more the more you earn. Yeah, absolutely. But I think, yeah, that, that was good to, for you to explain that. Because I think sometimes, I know I've spoken to people who have almost avoided taking out, especially maintenance loans, right? And that's obviously the loan when you're in university that will help you live. And I yep. use that because I moved away from home. And I've avoided taking out more money because they're like, no, it's a loan and I've got to pay it back. And, I, you know, I don't want to graduate and I have to pay it all back. You know, let me just kind of live within my means and maybe make it harder for myself. But I think, yeah, the way you explained it, that definitely does help. We mentioned student loan. Now, that operative word loan, will that affect people's ability in the future when it comes to getting a mortgage or any other type of loan, having a student loan out? It can do. So especially with a mortgage, because there is a rule, which is that the student loan doesn't impact your credit score which then commonly misconstrued as therefore it doesn't impact your mortgage. That's not true. So it doesn't impact your credit score in the terms it doesn't get, it's not information that filters into your credit rating agencies, which then provide you with a credit score. But it can affect how much mortgage you get because if you went to a mortgage provider or you went to a mortgage advisor, et cetera, and said, right, this is my income, they would say to you, okay, what are your outgoings? And they will look at your outgoings, one being your student loan. So if you are earning at like over that threshold and you've got quite a large chunk coming out for student loans that can affect how much you can borrow so that's where it can affect your mortgage it can't you know there is discussions around if it can stop you getting mortgage it shouldn't be able to stop you it's not it's not like a bad note on your credit score it is just something to be aware of that it can reduce how much mortgage you can get I think that's good to know so it's just part of the affordability checks that yes. the mortgage providers do you know it's part of what are you paying what you're outgoing and that's just one of them if you don't earn over that I think that's good to know now there's a big question and one I know a lot of people want to know should we as in former students who've now graduated should we prioritize paying off our student loans or should we just carry on as we are when it comes to paying off your student loan, you need to put yourself in one of two camps. So one, if you are not earning enough that you're noticing it on your pay slip, leave it. Just leave it be. Because once you pay off that student loan, if you've voluntarily chosen to, you can't go back to the student loans company and get that money back. And that money is gone. So whilst you might be like taking down the loan, but you will end up with less money and obviously less money in your pocket, which you could have used for better things. If you fall into the other bracket where you are noticing a huge amount of money going out of your pay slip for student deductions, then it's time to look into whether you should be paying off early. Because like I said at the beginning, those interest rates are not to be laughed at. They are really hefty. And by paying off large chunks, you can obviously reduce the time left you've got to pay. Because if you know you're going to be paying off in full, obviously, and you have that disposable income to do so, do not bankrupt yourself trying to pay off your student loan. That is really important. I think a lot of people say, oh, well, I'll go to my parents and ask for money or I'll go to I'll take out another loan mm. to pay off my student loan. Please don't do that because it's a really flexible loan you're not going to find anywhere else. And that's why we call it, like I say, university tax as opposed to a loan. But yeah, there's two camps there really. And I, it very much depends on how it impacts you and your monthly earnings. That's really good to know. I think, yeah, so it, it all depends on what your income and outgoings look like. Because I said, I have conversations even with my friends yeah. who say, oh, you know, I need to pay off my student loan. But I think it is a very personal decision. It is how much does it actually impact your income yeah. as whether or not you it's, should. It's so personal because also, obviously, some parents really struggle with it because they, like our parents didn't have this or particularly my parents never went to uni so they um don't quite understand how big like they don't get why it's such a big amount of money but I'm not worried about it so they're like the older generation look to our generation and just can't imagine why we're not paying this off quickly but it's because it's 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 not really the same yeah yeah it's, it's, it's not, not it's not how they view maybe mortgages where they may overpay their mortgages it's yeah different like you said so if there's people who have children now or are thinking about having kids in the future what could they be doing to think about their kids going to university before they hit 18 to make that all easier when it comes around? In terms of funding it, I suppose setting up 
pots for them for the future. We all know compound interest is king or queen. And therefore, the earlier you start, the better you can, you know, build that pot up. So things like junior ISAs or junior bank accounts for young people are really great ways to just put little bits of money away now. And hopefully when they get to it at 18 or whenever they choose to go to university, it's a nice pot for them there that can help them with maintenance or even, you know, other things to do with uni. Exactly, exactly. So Abigail, before we go, what three things would you recommend to someone that they can do to help them get a little bit richer? So first thing would definitely be check that you're paying the right amount of student loan. Um, So throughout the year, checking in on your student loan website and that you're paying the right amount. Secondly, would be looking to how many years you've got left to pay because there might be a possibility that you might not pay the entire student loan back. So with plan one, that's after 25 years, it gets wiped. With plan two, after 30. And with plan five, it's actually 40 years. But if you're in that plan two area and you've only got so many years left, you might not need to repay over if you are never going to repay in full and then third and finally would be education please keep your education up to date in your knowledge because the plans have changed we know that we've just discussed it today but a lot of people don't realize that the plans changed and this reflects everything within finance and money right now everything's changing so yeah keep your education up to date thank you so much this has been a very insightful episode it's black friday next week which means christmas will be here before we know it So in the next episode, I want to see if there's such a thing as a cost-effective Christmas. Until then, be sure to hit follow and leave us a review. Thank you for listening.